Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Oh, welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions and we are up to week number 136. So for anyone watching my channel, you'll know that we're doing reruns. So we're rerunning week number 36, week number 136. Um, so what we are making today, we are making fabric yo-yos. So fabric yo-yos for your junk journals, you know, or any other projects that you fancy using them in. So if you want to craft along today, what you're going to need is a variety of fabrics. Now I have bought along a bunch of different fabrics and um, yeah, I mean some I haven't really tried before. So I've got here some old little dresses of, um, you know, my daughter's kind of uh, Barbie dolls. This is a sort of nylon-y stuff. You can probably hear it's like stiffened. So um, yeah, this kind of constantly comes undone. So, you know, and now I've said that, it's now not coming undone at all, but yeah. So anyway, she said she didn't want this anymore. So um, yeah, I'm going to use that. This one, which <laughs> it was a dress, she had already, you know, cut it up anyway. Um, this one is not stiffened, so I'm going to try using that. And then I've got some other sort of satiny material as well. And the reason I'm highlighting this and kind of showing this is because, um, and actually, now I've said that, I can't... Oh, there we go. Um, because I can't quite tell how this is going to work. This is the type of fabric that I would normally use, you know, for the petals that you do with the matches. Or, you know, the lighter, the candle. Um, because it's very fray, you know, fray, uh, prone to fraying um, on the edges. So I'm not quite sure how these are going to go, but we're going to give them a try. And aside from that, I've got sort of different cotton fabrics, really. Um, the only more upholstery sort of grade fabric I've got is this um I have coffee dyed this now this um again this might be a little bit on the bulky side for fabric yo-yos to be honest um so yeah we're going to just have a sort of trial and error sort of basis there so you're going to need a selection of fabrics you're going to need some scissors you're going to need needle and thread which I have already threaded um for very long lengths so hopefully I'm going to spare you the pain of having to watch me thread the needles. But it does depend, obviously, how many that we get done as to whether I would need to re-thread or not. So all you're going to do is, um, yeah, basically we're going to do some circles, you know, cut some circles and make the yo-yos. Now, of course, you can vary the sizes and things like that. Now, probably most of you have already made um, yo-yos before, so... And I did say this in the last one. I'm in no means trying to teach anyone to suck eggs or anything like that. You know, I know these are obviously, you know, they're an old, um, you know, an old favourite kind of thing. And so a lot of you have probably made these before. Um, but yeah, I really like them. So, you know, yeah. And obviously we are rerunning the, the ones that we've done before. So, of course, these were the next in the sequence. So these, now this fabric was some fabric that my mum gave me. Um, I think she'd had it in the 70s. I'm just going to quickly finish my tea. Okay. Um, she'd had it in the 70s. And I think she said she was obviously <laughs> endeavouring to make some, um, you know, patchwork kind of quilts and things. She obviously never got round to finishing it. And... Um, yeah subsequently she just had all these little hexagonal pieces of cloth so she said to me oh you know having a clear out kind of thing you know can you do anything with this so I thought wow yes definitely so this she had already stitched this onto this um weird sort of paper back in paper but actually it makes it really wonderful for cutting out because it keeps the fabric from like flopping around so yeah I mean actually brilliant um way to cut fabric is obviously put some paper underneath it now all you're going to do is cut a circle and obviously like I say depending on the size of your yo-yos is going to depend you know how big your circle was now I don't have a formula for this or anything and as you know I don't really measure anything but if I just put this on my craft mat it's kind of roughly a like three inch by three inch um you know circle but by no means is that a definite and obviously I'm going to vary these throughout the making. So, you know, we're going to just have a whole bunch of different size ones. Now, I try and put my first stitch, you know, the needle through the underneath fabric. So not the top fabric, but the underneath. Again, I don't really know how, you know, vital this is in, um, <laughs> you know, your produced yo-yo. 
but that's just how I've kind of always done it. And then I just do this, which I think this is what's referred to as a running stitch. And I just do it for as much as I can fit onto the length of the needle. And then obviously pull my needle through like that. And then do a running stitch again, obviously, for, you know, the next section of the circle. You know, as close as I can to the edge without it sort of being where it's going to compromise the fabric, if you see what I mean. Because if you get too, too close, you're just going to end up, you know, fraying the fabric, really. So as close as I can, but, you know, not sort of so close that I'm going to end up in trouble. And then again, just pull that through. Now I've just got a tiny little piece left. Now at this point, if it's turned inside out, I just turn it in the right way, just because it's going to be easier to do that here. And then I just finish it off with a couple more running stitches here. Like that. And you want to get back to your beginning piece or your beginning stitch thereabouts you know again no you know no um definite kind of you have to go through that stitch or anything now what you've got here and I did describe it like this before I think it's a bit like a shower cap um super super cute isn't it so depending on how tightly wound you want your yo-yo you then just pull your thread now I always do mine pretty tight I have to say um, but I have seen other people actually do them sort of much looser, more like this. Personally, I would say it depends how you're going to be finishing yours off. If you're going to be having something that's going to cover up, you know, something larger that's going to cover up your hole, then, you know, you could leave it quite loose. If you're going to be using, say, like a button or something that's smaller, then I would say pull it, you know, pretty tight so that you have less of a gap there that you're going to have to fill in. But again, you know, completely up to you how you do this. And then I always finish mine by threading the needle back through once it's gathered to the back. And then I just knot it off here. Again, I don't know whether that is how other people finish theirs. This is just something that I have found to work perfectly well for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, you know, if you don't want to finish yours off like this, you know, you might prefer to just stitch through a couple of times or something like that. This for me is just something that I found works pretty well. Um, and then of course, just, you know, snip this off because my yo-yos would all be glued down onto a page. So therefore having my thread through the back, it doesn't matter because it's going to be stuck onto a page. So, you know, it's all, it's all fine. And then you can obviously finish your yo-yo off with, you know, any manner of different pieces. So I've got here a little resin flower. Could put something like that in the middle. I mean, actually, that doesn't look as good as I'd hoped on that particular fabric. Um, but, you know, I think it would on some of the other fabrics that I've got here. So I'm going to try it again in a minute, I think. Um, alternatively... You might like to finish it off with a button. Again, that's pretty huge on there. Not looking the best. Well, let me just pull in some other buttons. Oh, that was another thing that I forgot to say. Was, yeah, you might want some buttons or something to finish your your yo-yos off with. I mean, that's a little mother of, mother of pearl button. How gorgeous does that look? So, again, if you hadn't knotted your thing, you know, your thread through, you could have just stitched that on. But you might prefer to just use some glue. Now, I tend to often just glue, and again, I would just use hot glue for this. And the hot glue, you can then press that in, and it's going to do quite a good job of, again, sort of reinforcing your little yo-yo together, like that. Okay? So... You know, just depends really how you want it finished. But personally, I mean, I find the glue works really well. Um, you know, but depends how you want to do it. I mean, yeah, just play around and again, see the style that suits you best. So maybe we'll do some that where we, um, you know, stitch them through instead. So take my thread again and just double knot that at the end, just again, so when it goes through. And to be honest, this 
is as well, you know, something else that I tend to do. And I'm not saying that other people necessarily do this because I think some people don't even knot their thread. They just kind of stitch through a couple of times. Um, personally, I'm rubbish. And if I try and do that, I end up just pulling the thread straight out. So for me, tie in the knot, that's the way to go. So I'm just going to put this one to one side. So let's take this fabric now. Again, it's another one of those little hexagons. And we're just going to then cut that round like that. And like I say, I mean, you really can vary the, um, you know, the sizes that you're doing these. And, you know, don't worry, your circle really does not have to be a perfect circle or anything. Just, you know, roughly kind of, yeah, roughly make a circle. So run in stitch again starting on the inside out side of the fabric i.e the wrong side of the fabric and like i said i mean i don't really know whether that does make a difference or not you know whether it would matter if you started on the right side of the fabric it's just something that you know i think it's kind of good practice to do so pull that through and then again another run of running stitches like that Okie dokie, like that, oh. okay, whoops, my thread got sort of tangled, there we go, right, and then just that last little bit there left to do, so again just pull that, or you know stitch that through, like that, and you just want it to meet up approximately where your first stitch was, and again just pull that through. Poke your finger in to, you know, push your shower cap looking thing out. And then you can, you know, just get your yo-yo to this sort of, you know, approximate shape and, um, yeah, configuration how you like it. So like that. So for this one, let's stitch a button on. So, yeah, I'm going to just thread again back through to the back. That just for me, that just holds it nicely. So... Now, is this a button? Hmm. I'm trying to see whether that had anything, you know, whether I have drawn that on there or whether that had actually pattern. I'm not really too sure, to be honest. Oh, why have I not really got any buttons that would go perfectly? Oh, well, I'm just going to use this one. So we're just going to go back through here and then just, oops. Stitch through your button just to hold it in place. So for me, I think, you know, just the gluing is quicker because I'm not really much of a seamstress. If you see what I mean, well, not much, not, not any of a seamstress. Um, but again, you know, if you're quite good with a needle and thread, you might actually find it's quicker to use the needle and thread than the glue. It just sort of depends really. Um, you know, but I sometimes struggle to like find the buttonholes and things like that. So, you know, just, yeah, play around and kind of find the method that suits you best. And then again, just knock that off a couple of times at the back. Once you've got your button secured into place. Okay. That's it. And again, just trim that down. And that's another one there. So, I mean, they're just gorgeous little um, flowers to make, aren't they? You know, um, it's just a sort of different take on a fabric flower, really. But I think they're just really fun, you know, fun little kind of embellishments, really. And they just go on so many things. And to be honest, the bonus of a yo-yo is, unless you're doing the puffed yo-yos, which I have got a tutorial on my channel of the puffed ones, they're pretty flat. So if I just kind of show you sideways on... I mean, that's, yeah, flat as anything. So it's not going to bulk your journal out really at all. So that's that one. So, yeah, I probably don't really need to talk you through any more because, you know, of course, they're not particularly difficult. And like I say, most of you have probably even made these before. So, you know, I don't want to be kind of boring you completely by just keeping on talking you through something that you've perhaps done before. But I'm just going to cut down my fabric. I don't know what's happened with this here um i'm going to cut down my fabric into some circles 
So I'm going to make these now in a sort of, you know, assembly line style. So I'm going to do all my circle cutting, then all my stitching, and then probably all my centres, you know, if I haven't put the buttons in at the time of stitching, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully we can just kind of then, um, you know, relax into this and, yeah, just have a really nice little crafting session. So I won't probably talk you through any more of the process unless I'm doing something different or, you know, yeah, like maybe talking about what I'm going to be putting in the centre or something like that. But on the whole, I'm just going to literally cut my circles and, yeah, do it sort of assembly line style, really. So, I hope everyone's having a nice start to their week. If you watch my channel regularly, you'll know I film these on a Monday, ready to go up on a Tuesday. So, yep, my week has obviously just started. And, um, yeah, oh, it's a miserable day here. Very grey, very ugh, rainy and horrible. Pretty cold, actually, as well. So it couldn't be more of a contrast to when I was doing the mass making video last week. And we just had a really glorious weekend. You know, the weather had been really, really lovely at the weekend. And um, it had been Mother's Day. We'd, you know, had a gorgeous, glorious day at the beach and things. Oh, just lovely, lovely weather. Yep, yeah, it's not been like that ever since, really. So, yeah, it was a miserable week and it gradually got colder and colder. Um, in fairness, actually, I say it was a miserable week. I think it was still quite sunny and bright. I can't even remember, ironically. Um, I think it was still quite sunny and bright, but yeah, definitely, definitely the weather's like deteriorated a lot. So the temperature, I mean, when I went to the gym the other day, it was one and a half in the, in the morning this was. So it was like first thing um, at like six o'clock in the morning. I think it did warm up in the day. I think it got to about seven and a half I feel like it got to about seven and a half I could be wrong um but yeah it was one and a half when I went to the gym so yeah pretty cold compared to like the weekend where last weekend it had been oh I, I think I'm right in thinking it was something like 15 or 16 might have even been 18 I can't quite remember but yeah it was definitely gorgeous and um definitely not gorgeous now pretty chilly and rubbish so um yeah a bit of a contrast there but you know i mean yeah it is what it is it's okay but yeah today is not only cold but raining so yeah it's deteriorated further what have we been doing since last week oh my son and i we went to the cinema and we watched a film called <gasps> What was it called? What was it called? Oh my goodness, I can't think. Oh, oh yes, yes. Phantom of the Open, it was called. Now, I, t I had seen a trailer of this and thought, oh, this is going to be rubbish, you know, shall we even bother? Um, but we did because we really like going to the cinema and we tend to go, you know, on a Wednesday and, um, you know, we, we can go then like for free kind of thing. So, um, we go, you know, using that Meerkat movie code and, you know, it's then free to go. So we went and we watched this film called Phantom of the Open. Now, it's a British film and it was about this chap called oh, Morris Flintcroft, I think his name was. Um, I think it was in the 70s. I'm so sorry that I'm so sketchy with <laughs> what I can remember. Honestly, my memory's like a sieve. Um, yeah, I think it was in the 70s. And um, he kind of started out, he, um, I mean, he actually looked quite old, but they said, or he said at one point that he was 46. So yeah, he, he was just aging badly, I think. But yeah, he'd, um, you know, he got by then two grown up, uh, three grown up children and things. And, um, you know, his wife was kind of like, oh, you know, it's time to do something for you kind of thing. You know, you've always kind of, you know, done things for us as the family, you know, do something for yourself. So he decided he was going to enter the open, you know, like the golf, the golf open. Now, I know nothing about golf. Um, you know, I think I mentioned last year, but I went to that driving range a couple of times with the, you know, the boys. And um, yeah, I mean, I was so rubbish, I can't tell you. But, you know, it was quite fun. But yeah, certainly not a golfer and know nothing about golf. So 
quite what the entry requirements are for the you know the open i'm really not too sure and the film yeah i wasn't quite sure even having watched the film but this chap very weirdly he decided to enter the, go the golf open and having never even played golf before and would you believe he managed to get in somehow so uh, no idea if this is like you know is this still the case i don't know um you know does it mean the golf open is that like literally open to anyone and everyone i've no idea no idea um but yeah he decided to enter the golf open and um he then had to kind of like try and teach himself a little bit to play golf and you know they didn't have very much money or anything like that so i mean he couldn't really afford the you know the fee for the golf club i mean i know that some of these golf clubs they charge like a fortune don't they for membership and things like that our golf club where i went to go on the driving range i don't know i mean they used to be very expensive i don't know whether they still perhaps have membership options which presumably would be very expensive but it's very affordable to just go to the driving range but i'm thinking perhaps kind of in years gone by they didn't really have that i think it was just that really extortionate you know golf membership so um sorry for jogging the table there so he went to the the golf club and um he couldn't really even afford to kind of play the you know play the game or anything um and they were obviously very you know unwelcoming and kind of yeah not really wanting you know his thought because he didn't have the right shoes and you know it was not very friendly um or welcoming for him which was you know horrible and um so he wasn't able to play at that golf club so um he was literally practicing like on the beach <laughs> so of course his playing was um, erratic to say the least um and then he then was at the golf open and <laughs> yeah obviously shocking you know played shockingly compared to other people who were kind of like professional sort of golfers or certainly people who had played regularly and were pretty good um anyway it it was quite a funny film and actually more than that it was a heartwarming you know sweet sort of story and yeah i mean i won't sort of give it away because um you know it would obviously spoil it for you but yeah i mean it was very funny the things that he did to keep being able to enter the golf open which they kind of tried their best to ban him from being able to play and being able to enter it was very 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 funny and um yeah it was just a nice film you know when you come out and We'd gone in with low expectations, which sometimes those films actually turn out to be the best, don't they? Because you don't know what to expect and you kind of have, you know, these low hopes for it. That when you come out, you kind of say, oh, that was such a good film. You know, whereas sometimes I go in expecting the film to be great. You know, because maybe you've looked forward to it for a long time or something, you know. And then actually you come out and think, well, that was rubbish. Anyway, it was, yeah, it was a good film. So we did really, really enjoy it. And, um yeah so if you're looking for anything that's just you know light-hearted sweet sort of story then yeah i would recommend that we did really like it and in contrast funny enough i spoke to um my friend at the gym this morning and she said that they had gone to the cinema at the weekend and watched a film called the ambulance now i have to say it was um you know a sort of um yeah like choice basically between the phantom of the apron oh open not apron um open or the ambulance it was that choice last week for my son and i and i said to him you know well i've watched the trailer of the ambulance it doesn't really look like my type of film um you know so i would probably prefer to watch the you know the phantom of the open well thank goodness because when i saw my friend this morning she said that they went and watched the ambulance and she said i'll i think she said the film was something like two hours 13 minutes or something and she said not kidding but for two hours of the film it was just car chase all through those two hours oh my goodness how rubbish would that have been so yeah definitely 
definitely pleased we saw the Phantom of the Open instead because oh, I couldn't have imagined anything worse than just watching those car chases, you know, on um, you know, on those films. I mean, I love cars and I, you know, I love watching Grand Tour and all of that kind of stuff, but that's got very amusing commentary to go with it. I mean, just watching pointless car chases, oh my goodness, couldn't imagine anything more dull. So, yeah, very pleased that we did not waste our time going to watch that. So, you know, and no offence to anyone who obviously has been to see that and liked it, but yeah, just not my type of film, really. So, yeah, that was... um that was our highlight of the of the cinema going well obviously that was the only film that we've been to see um what else what else what else oh the saga of the bathroom continues so yeah again if you watch my channel you'll have heard me talking about the bathroom and oh my very bold choice color choice of the almost black for the bathroom and then last week I had to concede and just admit defeat when everyone was just telling me how awful it looked so yeah I had to kind of say oh, okay maybe you're right you know so we then repainted it and we went for pink because and I said all this um, last week I think I just happened to have some pale pink paint left from my kitchen so I thought well waste not want not we will use you know use that paint of course, then, you know, the pink paint, it took a lot of pink paint to cover up the very dark colour that we had already painted on the wall. So, of course, we ran, ran out of paint. So, yep, I then thought, well, I'll get them to mix some up for us at the paint mixing place. Well, they couldn't mix it up. Um, it was, yeah, not quite the right colour, which, of course, we'd already painted, you know, with all the remaining paint that we had. So I thought, well, I don't want to get it mixed and it not be the right colour because then we'll have to start again. So I then had to look online and thank goodness, a lot of places do actually stock the Laura Ashley paint online. So I think it was B&Q in the end. Um, I managed to get some Laura Ashley B&Q, you know, Laura Ashley paint from B&Q. So I managed to get, you know, the original colour that um, I had used. So it was called Pale Chalk Pink. Um, anyway, so yeah, <sighs> the saga continues. So the paint arrived, um, oh, I don't know, late last week, maybe Thursday or something. And then my eldest son, bless him, he was off work on Friday. He had a day off because they've been doing, um, you know, I don't know, some sort of testing or something all week, which had required them to literally be starting work at 4.30 in the morning. So they were very lucky and were able to have the day off on Friday. Um, so yeah, he was very kind and he then said, oh, you know, I'll, um, get cracking on with the bathroom. So I'm just going to go through this another couple of times because it's kind of got some bulk here. So I just want to kind of squish this down if I can. Um, so yeah, he went in and, you know, did another couple of coats. Um, so yeah, the saga kind of continues really. So of course then we were still waiting for it to dry and things and then it was the weekend, so didn't really have time to do anything at the weekend. So yes, the bathroom is still not finished, would you believe? I mean, oh, for such a small room, it is taking <laughs> forever to get it finished. Now, my bathroom was quite girly previously and um, you know, it's just tiled like halfway. So I had lots of girly sort of pictures hung on the walls and stuff. So, you know, although it's only a small room and, you know, yes, it is a bathroom. So weird really to have anything. But, you know, there were quite a lot of pictures and things hanging up. So all of those things that were up on the walls have just been cluttering up my landing. Um, you know, the whole time we've been doing the bathroom, which actually I think might be three weeks now. So literally... I mean, came out of my bedroom the other day, tripped over um, the mirror that was on the floor outside of my bedroom. So, yeah, I can't wait to get the bathroom actually finished and get everything hung back on the wall because, oh my goodness, it's just driving me potty. Um, yeah, I mean, we've all kind of, you know, done our bits in there and, you know, I've done some painting, my middle son's done some painting, my eldest son's done some painting. You know, I think we've probably done pretty much equal. Um, I have to confess and say I really did none last week because I was just busy on my laptop really most of the week last week. 
Um, obviously, I did my, my videos each day, but I then had, um, you know, quite a sort of busy week on my laptop um, to, you know, do some things to put into my shop. So, um, yeah, it was not a productive week from a paint, painting point of view. And then at the weekend, um, my sons then went and did a car boot sale. And I did mention this, I think, last week, saying that we were going to do that. So, yeah, they did that yesterday morning. And again, they were really kind because um, it actually, in the end, I thought, oh, well, I'll just go and help my middle son because my oldest son said he didn't want to do it, which is fair enough. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just go with my middle son and I will help him do it. Anyway, at the last minute, my eldest son he got up and he just said oh I'll, I'll go and help him which was fantastic because then I was able to do two videos whilst they were gone um which was you know obviously a much better use of time oh what a waste of time the car boot sale was because um yeah well they ended up um you know I obviously gave them the money for the pitch you know and everything um and then I'd said to my middle son you know will go halves on anything that you make well by the time that he took the pitch money off and things i literally made nothing you know he made a bit of money and yeah i made nothing he when i say he made some money because he had one or two things that he took of his own um because yeah we sold things like my daughter's play kitchen which i've talked about before which used to be my middle son's so he took things like that. So, of course, you know, I wasn't going to be going halves with him for that. He was obviously keeping the money, you know, for that himself. Um, so, yeah, I literally made nothing, really, um, <laughs> which was rubbish. But, hey, the stuff's gone from the house, so it's a bit less clutter, which is, you know, amazing. And to be fair, that's, you know, that's really what the goal was, was to clear some stuff, you know. I mean, obviously, if I'd have made a few pounds that would have been you know better still but yeah I mean it's not the end of the world so um yeah that's what they did yesterday um and oh I forgot to say but yeah last week I think when I was doing my mass making video last week my middle son was home from school and he was going to make a start on my daughter's bedroom clearing up her mess now I've talked about her so many times she's like the messiest child on the planet her bedroom was disgusting absolutely disgusting now it had come to the point and this is just how rubbish I am I just I couldn't go in there so I literally I just didn't even look in there I just walked past and not even look not even look in there I only ventured in there you know like if I had to go in there with her looking for something or you know helping her find something or you know things like that on the whole I just literally avoid even looking in the direction of her room. Her room's at the top of the stairs. So to be fair, you can kind of get to the top of the stairs and just look the other way, and then you don't actually have to see in there. So that was what I I was doing. Anyway, my middle son was in there and he was clearing it up. And of course I said I would pay him, you know, to do that. And, um, you know, and it sounds like I'm terrible and, um, you know, making him do that. He loves, loves, loves cleaning. And when I say cleaning, he loves a makeover. So, I mean, of course, he doesn't love, you know, he wouldn't love just generally cleaning the bathroom or anything like that. No, he doesn't love things like that. I mean, let's face it, who does? But yeah, he doesn't love things like that, but he absolutely loves it. You know, if a room is really terrible, i.e. my daughter's room, he absolutely loves going in and transforming the room you know so it's like unrecognizable he finds it so satisfying so you know although it sounds like oh my goodness isn't she mean she made her son do it he loves that so yeah he had such a lovely time um i mean have to say i thought it was just going to take him a couple of hours it ended up taking him you know about five hours i think so I did feel really bad and I said, oh, you know, if I could afford to pay you more, I would because we'd obviously agreed a price first. But I said, I, you know, I haven't got any more money, I'm afraid, so I can only pay you that. But he called me up um, like mid-afternoon and just said, oh, you know, come and see how I'm doing in her room. And I went up and had a look. I'm just going to get, um, you know, my next, my next needle with the thread. 
Um, so yeah, went up mid-afternoon and he done a pretty good job. It was looking pretty good already. Oh my goodness. It got to 6.30 and I was calling them down for dinner. And, um, you know, that's how long he was still working on it. It was 6.30. And I said, you know, come down for dinner now, you know. And he said, well, I will, but just quickly come up and see her room. So I went up and I didn't really expect it to look, you know, very much different to how it had looked, you know, about an hour before or a couple of hours before, because obviously, you know, it would only been a couple of hours and he'd, he'd done most of it, you know, at that point or what I thought was most of it. Oh my goodness. He was amazing. He had rearranged her furniture. He dragged her wardrobe and moved it to a different wall. I mean, I said, who helped you with all of that? You know, because I thought he must have got his brother to come and help him. He said, nobody. I just did it myself. Oh, my goodness. It looked amazing. Literally incredible. I just couldn't believe it. The room looked so much bigger. Um, you know, obviously, because all the rubbish had gone. Um, but... He had rearranged the furniture in a way that, you know, I'd never had the furniture laid out, um, you know, how he had laid it out. And it just looked incredible. I couldn't believe it. So, yeah, he'd just done such a phenomenal job in there. And, you know, I said to him, oh, why didn't you take some before and after pictures? Because, you know, you've got this amazing talent. And to be honest, I think there's probably tons of mums out there who've got these hideous bedrooms from their children. And they would pay somebody to just go in and just ruthlessly blitz the room, you know, like this. And, you know, I think there is like a gap in the market for this. Well, of course, he hadn't taken any before and after pictures. So, you know, that was kind of, yeah, by the by. But such a shame because I honestly think, you know, he has got like a sort of special talent really for this. And, um, yeah, I think he would do just incredibly well. At doing that and you know I did say you know did you enjoy doing it and he said yeah because he loves that satisfying feeling when he then you know looks in there and I can't tell you so I've gone from normally where I just get to the top of the stairs and just turn my head the other way where I don't even look in her room to now I can't stop looking in there it looks incredible and I can't stop keep on you know walking past and going back in there and having another look because it looks so so good she absolutely loved it. Couldn't believe the the transformation. So she has been warned now, you know, you keep your room like this. There is no more food coming upstairs. You do not bring, you know, crisps, biscuits, breadsticks or anything else up here. I have to say already later that evening, I did catch her trying to take something up. I said, uh, no, you bring that back down and you bring it back to the kitchen and eat it in there. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed she's going to keep it in that beautiful, beautiful way that it now looks. So, yeah, that was probably my highlight of literally the whole year so far. So, um, you know, it just looked so amazing. So, yeah, really, really, really incredible. And, yeah, just lovely. So we are going to hopefully, you know, revamp her room. I know I did talk about this as well, but, yeah going to try and get her one of those storage type beds you know like an ottoman bed where you can lift it up um they do do those in single size so i mean it would have been nice to have got her a double bed one of those small double beds but to be honest i don't think really she could fit one in there she, well she could fit one in there but not really get much of a wardrobe in there and to be honest she probably needs the storage of the wardrobe so yeah we'll We'll have to see. But again, I said to my son, well, come and sit in there with me and we can talk about the room and kind of see what we think. Because actually he is so good, you know, with his um, ideas and he might just have some ideas that I hadn't really thought of. So, um, yeah, we're going to do that. I mean, obviously, we just need to crack on and finish the bathroom first because I don't want to have more mess, you know, when we're then decorating her room. But yeah, because she um, she had like unicorn wallpaper in there. And, um, yeah, I mean, she, again, she's a bit of a devil because she had peeled some of the wallpaper off and things like that. I mean, yeah, it's been done for a few years. So, I mean, hopefully she's a bit more grown up now and wouldn't do things like that. Um, but that being said, who knows? She's one of those um, pickers. You know, like some children, they, they just like to pick things, don't they? She's one of them. 
So, yeah, I, but I will warn her, obviously, a lot about, you know, you must not do this in your new bedroom with your new wallpaper. Um, so, yeah, I've been looking for some wallpaper and things like that for her room. Um, and I'm thinking, like, tropical, tropical kind of, um, you know, paradise-y type, type look. There's lots of tropical type wallpapers at the moment with... Um, they're not palm trees, but that type of thing. And then like flamingo-y type birds. Well, not flamingos, actually. No, not flamingos. Because they're like an in thing, aren't they, flamingos? So, yeah, not really those. More like um, those birds of paradise, that type of thing. Um, so, yeah, I've been getting a few wallpaper samples. Um, you know, just when I've been in a shop. Um, in fact, the range, the shop that I took you all to, you know, for the craft shopping. I picked up some wallpaper samples from there um, and some of those are really nice so who knows and then I thought what we could do she could just have plain white bedding um, you know so it's all very nice and easy to keep clean I could just boil it up if she spilt things on it and things like that um, and then just add some accent colours you know just with some cushions and things like that perhaps you know from some of the colours in like the I don't know birds of paradise or something you know if if that would look good so that's the plan but yeah that will probably take weeks yet um you know unless I can really crack on but yeah it's um I mean these things you know you have in your mind oh you know I'll just do this I'll just do that but to be honest things do take a phenomenally long time to do don't they and you know so with the best will in the world you know although it sounds like not a lot and even in my head it doesn't seem like a big task or a big job I mean actually then achieving it is kind of yeah a whole different ball game and I have to say I can't wallpaper to save my life so I've only ever tried it once but I was rubbish because you know of course you have to be pretty patient with the cutting so whilst the hanging I wasn't too too bad the cutting my goodness I was just shocking um my son he wallpapered our like living room as my Christmas present um last year I don't think he overly enjoyed it he made an okay job of it I don't know whether I would be able to rope him in to do the wallpapering for her bedroom I do really like wallpaper I know it's not everybody's cup of tea but yeah I prefer it probably to paint I just think it looks a bit more you know a bit more interesting really than paint so yeah I'd like to have wallpaper if possible but like I say you know it's kind of like who's going to do it out of me and both my sons really so yeah I'll have to um try and try and persuade them and yeah persuade slash pay I suspect Sus <laughs> yeah persuade slash pay um so yeah that's kind of all what's been going on really in our house uh anything else to report I don't think so really um Oh, next week is the school holidays. I can't believe that's come around so quick. So the Easter holidays, that is. Um, yeah, it just seems to come around quicker than ever, doesn't it? And yeah, Easter holidays already. So it's just flying by again this year. Okay. That feels really thick, that piece of fabric. I don't know why. Just had to sort of check whether I had two bits there. It felt so thick. I don't appear to have, but yeah, it definitely has a thick feel about it. Okay. So, yeah, these are quite a nice one to do in front of the TV. Um, you know, because, yeah, I mean, they're a great way to use up some of your fabric scraps, obviously. You know, they don't take up much in the way of fabric you know you can probably see I mean we've used you know several very tiny pieces of fabric if you see what I mean um and we've made yeah we've made a fair few of these so you know and I mean how long have I been filming 45 minutes so you know they're coming together reasonably quickly aren't they so I mean it's quite a good way to get through quite a you know, quite a good range of, or, you know, quite a good volume of fabric scraps um, pretty quickly. And, of course, silently. So, you know, if you're watching TV with other people, 
you're not going to disturb them by making these, that's for sure. So, you know, there, I'd recommend these as a TV project, definitely. And they're quite, um, well, quite satisfying to make, actually. Yeah, they look look fun, sort of, you know, and I love looking at them all afterwards and think, oh, aren't they cute, you know. And they just look really pretty on a page. So, yeah, I think they're quite a fun one to do. And like I say, they're a bit different from like other fabric flowers in that they're very, very flat and no gluing. So whereas some fabric flowers, you know, you might have to glue them. These are no glue, you know, no um, bulk. So, yeah, they're quite a good sort of versatile one, I think, really. Or, you know, practical one, practical. And yeah, definitely, definitely a good option for when you're watching TV. So I would highly recommend making some of these whilst watching TV. So there we go. Right. Nearly done. Okay. There we go. Just spread that out. Okay. Right, now I've also got um, another series coming up actually on my channel, which I need to do a little trailer for. Um, so I'm not sure yet when I'm going to be planning on putting it out, but hopefully within the next week or so it will um, it will start. So keep your eyes peeled. I will put the trailer out obviously so as you know when it's going to be starting. But yeah, I really hope that you're going to enjoy it. I filmed it a little while ago. And I just, I hadn't put it out because I felt like I had done several serieses of late and I didn't want to just kind of like bombard you with like one series after another because, you know, they're kind of, I'm not saying a commitment exactly, but, you know, they may be, um, I don't know, like a bit of a drain perhaps on people's time. So, um, yeah, I've held fire in actually putting it up. But, yeah, hopefully I will... Um, you know, do a trailer for it and it will be going out, yeah, within the next week, hopefully. Um, also got some other plans for some more physical things to be putting in my shop. I know that I'd said that, you know, it was my plan to put some physical stuff in my shop this year. Um, so, yep, I'm still trying to stick with that. So, yep, hopefully got some more physical things coming in my shop. And, you know, I did say this as well recently, but I'm going to just try and sort of alternate... Um, you know, with different products. So, you know, like the book page bundles, um, you know, and things like that. So hopefully every, you know, couple of weeks, say, there will be some more physical items and they will be like rotated. So, you know, like every few weeks, I will hopefully try and put, say, more book page bundles or, you know, I've got some fussy cut items, like sort of die cut packs which I've been working on. Yep, still working still working on those. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to hopefully put some of those in my shop and things. So it's just a case of, um, you know, when I can kind of fit it in, really. So, uh, yeah, we'll kind of see. But the plan is every, you know, every few weeks there will be like a rotation of product. So if you missed out on, say, like, you know, if there's some fussy cut packs... If you miss out, I'm hoping that, you know, within a couple of or a few weeks, I will be able to do some more. It will depend, of course, how well things go down. You know, if things don't particularly sell well anyway, you know, and there's not really much, oops, much call for it, then, of course, I won't perhaps put them in there again. Um, but, you know, if things do seem to do well, you know, or are popular, then, you know, I will obviously try and put more in, if you see what I mean. So, yeah, and I think the only other quite exciting thing, well, I feel really, really excited by this, actually, was I worked over the last few weeks and finally finished it last week um, on a complete junk journal basics slash essentials kit. So it finally um, got finished last week and I put it into my shop. Now, it is a very... Um, different product to any of my other digitals in that it contains every single thing that you would need well I say every single thing I mean that's a sweeping statement in itself so yeah what I mean is um 
I have tried to contain everything that you would need. If you were just starting out making junk journals and either you're building up your stash generally, you know, or if you've already been doing junk journals, but you wanted to build up some digital products, which maybe you've not purchased before, it's going to um, contain, or it does contain, you know, a little of most things that I could think of that would be a junk journal essential, if that makes sense. So it's obviously more expensive than other digital products in my shop um, because it's a complete kit. So it's a complete beginner's um, kit. So it's $9.99, which I know sounds, you know, pretty expensive, but it contains 40 pages. I think it's actually about 42 pages. Um, but when you break that down, I think it works out something like 24 um, cents per page. You can obviously print those pages as much and as often as you like. And it's designed in such a way that it's really going to work with, obviously, all the different bits in the kit. So, you know, there's that. And it will work with a whole multitude of different things. So you've got like some fussy cut butterflies, you've got some fussy cut labels, you've got fussy cut um, frames, you've got some journal cards, um, you've got some uh, ooh, some blank tags, and then you've got, um, I think it's like 12 floral pages, and then you've got, I think it's 10 ledger pages. So it really is a very vast kit, and... It really does contain sort of everything to get you off the ground, if you see what I mean. If you were just kind of starting out and you thought, well, actually, I haven't really got a great deal of stash, you could buy that. And for your $10, you know, so although it sounds like a big investment, $10 will pretty much get you everything you need to get started. So all you would then need to do is obviously, you know, have your paper to print it on and maybe like some fabric or, you know, some lace or something. And then everything else is going to be there contained in that kit. So I'm not going to do these ones because, um, you know, I feel like I need to just finish these off now quickly. So I'm just going to try some different centres, I think, on these. Just so as we've got some different looks. I don't want them to all look the same. So I've got some of my blingy, my blingy gems here. So let's just see, see what we've got. Um, yeah, anyway, so it's listed in my shop and it is called um junk journal basics kit like i say i mean it's 9.99 but it does pretty much contain you know everything that you're going to need to make you know to make a junk journal so yeah i think it's actually really good value but i do realize that it's sort of like an investment you know it would feel you know it's it's a lot of money, you know, it's not going to be, um, you know, obviously most of my kits and things I try and keep around, you know, one or two dollars. So, of course, it's, you know, vastly different to those prices. Um, but you do get vastly more, you know, in the way of pieces. So, or, yeah, pieces, yeah, pieces slash pages. Um, so, yeah, I mean, hopefully, although it does, you know, sound quite a expensive kind of outlay it's going to go a long long way so yeah I've put it in my shop and I'm in the process of doing some videos using it um I have to say I'm not sure how long those videos are going to take before they go up because you know obviously like I say it's quite a big kit so I want to do quite a few different things with it so yeah I'm hoping that I'm going to do those videos over the next week or so and then, um, you know, I'll get those videos up. But yeah, just, you know, I'm very excited because I feel like it's something different. I hadn't really seen anyone else containing um, like a complete junk journal kit, as in it contains pretty much everything that you would need, you know, in terms of pieces. And then, of course, you know, you can make, you know, you can make pockets, you can make envelopes, you can make all sorts of things. And you're going to have, you know, plenty of selection to top things with. You've got flowers to fussy cut, all sorts of different things. And it's done in a way that 
sorry, I'm just reaching around for my little um, fashion things. Um, it's done in a way that you really are going to have a lot of different things that you can then put together. They're all going to complement each other really nicely. And you've got some really different looks. I mean, the floral pages are very, very, very colourful. and Just oh, beautiful, beautiful colours. Um, I'll just give you a bit of a sneak peek, actually, because I've just got a page here. So this is just one of the one of the floral backgrounds. Really, really pretty, isn't it? Um, and then you've got some very, very neutral things as well. So, you know, you really have got a lot of different sort of looks and things that you can then put together and use. So, yeah, very, very excited because, um, yeah, I just feel like it's something very, very different to anything else that I've kind of seen before. Um, you know, because it's got, like I say, a bit of everything. It's got frames, it's got journal cards, it's got um, labels, it's got flowers, it's got butterflies, it's got the background pages, then it's got some neutral back background pages, you know, all different things. So you can really then get started and, you know, just that $10, $10 outlay is going to go for an incredibly long way, um, you know. And I mean, I'm calling it a beginner's kit. Obviously, you know, you could still use it, you know, if you weren't a beginner, because of course it's going to have a whole bunch of different things to anything else that's in my shop. You know, I haven't sort of put repeat items in there, if you see what I mean. Um, the background pages, they're completely different to others that are in my shop. The labels, they're different. The flowers are different. The butterflies are different. You know, all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, if you wanted to, um, you know, just add to your existing stash, it would, you know, it would be another really good addition, I think. And, um, yeah, just hopefully kind of complement all of your existing things that you've already got. So, yeah, super excited anyway. So, um, you know, and, yeah, just, um, yeah. I mean, obviously, if you are starting out and you're just curious, then, you know, it might be something that you'd perhaps want to check out. That said, you may want to wait to see my launch video, which will hopefully be in the next couple of weeks. But like I say, I've got quite a lot of work to do in order to do that because the kit's quite big and I want to do... Yeah, I want to do it justice, I suppose, because there's a lot to it, i.e., you know, there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. I want to try and obviously do a lot of things with it. So um, I don't want to kind of put the videos out until I've done quite a few different things. So yeah, I'm going to be hopefully working on those videos over the next couple of weeks. But yeah, do do check it out if you, if you fancy or you're curious, then um, do check it out. Because honestly, I just, I was excited to go and use it myself because I just thought it, you know, contained such pretty papers. And um, yeah, it just kind of, I don't know, just spoke to me really because um, it was such a extensive kit and, um, oh, what's the words that I'm trying to use? complete I suppose yeah complete kind of extensive kit that you know contains literally everything that you could possibly need um you know so yeah for me it felt very exciting and I just really couldn't wait to kind of to get using it so uh yeah right just having a quick look to see what other bits to finish these with so so you know you can dress them up by obviously putting more blingy insides in um you know you don't have to kind of downgrade them well, I'm not saying downgrade, but, you know, downplay, downplay them by having buttons. You can always dress them up with more blingy, more blingy centres. And that looks really pretty too, doesn't it? Just going to see whether I could have one of these. Oh, yeah. One of those. Yeah, that's cute, isn't it? So that's those little kibash on ooh, pieces in the smaller size. So, yeah, let's put that on there. Okay. Right. Oh, and one more thing, actually. Um, I just want to say thank you so much to the lovely Mary Ann because I received such a lovely parcel from her. And oh my goodness, look at my ring. So, yep, yeah, she sent me this gorgeous parcel of Happy Mail and um, 
oh my goodness she sent me the eyelets that I know I've mentioned them before and I have mentioned them again recently in a video but that video has not gone up because when she sent them and I thought oh no I've actually talked about them this week but that video probably won't go up for a little while so um yeah she sent me the gorgeous um eyelets in all those different colors that um i'd had the eyelets envy from angela kerr so i now have my very own collection of eyelets so i felt like the luckiest person on the planet to receive those eyelets so i should definitely definitely be hoarding those um but yeah look at this ring oh i can't tell you how much i love this it's literally one of my favourite rings that I've ever, ever had. So thank you so much, Mary. As soon as I opened it and I saw that ring, I was like, oh my goodness, look at that ring. So yeah, thank you so, so, so much. I just absolutely love it. So thank you so much. And I really hope that you're doing well and yep, that that you're, um, you know, staying safe and yeah, doing well. So, and I loved reading your letter as well. So thank you so, so much. So this is our um, little selection of yo-yo flowers. I mean, they're really, really pretty, aren't they? And yeah, I mean, just to kind of, you know, just show you, if we just put them even just on some plain paper, I mean, how gorgeous do they look? I mean, that's just on the paper. They've not even got anything else on there. But don't they just look so scrumptious? So, I mean, literally, if you just then edged with a bit of lace... And then put, you know, put a little yo-yo there. How gorgeous and scrumptious does that look? You could obviously have a much more country look with the one with the button. You could go for this sumptuous look. I mean, I'm not saying that necessarily you'd put the green with the purple, but doesn't it look gorgeous? So, so pretty, isn't it? And let's just pull in one of those junk journal pages that I've just talked about from that basics kit. I mean, look at that on there or, you know, a pink one on there how scrumptious does that look just gorgeous isn't it and again you know if you had some lace on there and maybe that I mean how pretty does that look so yeah I mean they're just really really nice thing to make aren't they and a nice thing to have oops to have on hand um yeah so yep how many did we make one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen thirteen so yeah not too too bad I think so Yep, I hope that you like them and I hope you have a fantastic um, time making some if you decide to make them and have a fab week everybody and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun everyone. See you. Bye.